her on. Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Tonight we are in the book of 1 Peter. We'll be reading 1 Peter chapter 3. And the devotion tonight is by someone, I don't think we've ever had one before. She's a new writer to our book. So that will be Pat Butler Dyson. So we'll see what, how good of a writer she is. Let me know if you like her, if you like her better than some of the others. If you like her less, let me know. We should share these things. When we do these Bible studies together, we should be like which writers we like the best, you know? And anyway, the um, Bible verse that goes along with her devotion tonight is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, which says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous. All right, so now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. I believe it's wives and husbands and doing what is right. 1 Peter chapter 3. Wives and husbands and sufferings for doing good. Okay. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of their lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way be considerate as you live life with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but blessing with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing for whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do what is good. He must seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But if your heart set apart, wait. But if, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. 
who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved, though water and this water, through water, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Amen. All right, and that is 1 Peter chapter 3. So we'll stop there with that. We got about two inches of snow last night, and it's raining now. It's supposed to do this snow, rain, ice, snow, rain, ice. All weekend, I guess. And tomorrow, and maybe Tuesday. My hair is everywhere. So it's a little harder to breathe today. Okay, so her devotion, Pat's devotion, she says, I dashed out of the house, having overscheduled as usual. My daughter Melissa, who wasn't feeling well, texted me, asking what she should eat to settle her stomach. I suggested yogurt, but since she didn't have any, I told her I'd run to the store and get some for her. Nothing I had to do was more important than helping my child. Puzzling over yogurt flavors at the dairy counter, I heard a voice behind me say, what can I get to help my baby gain weight? Oh Lord, I don't have time for this, I thought. But I faced a worried looking woman in the coral sweater and asked, how old is your baby? 22, she replied. She told me her daughter had undergone surgery several weeks before and now had no appetite and had lost 10 pounds. I could relate to the fear I saw on this mother's face. I really don't have time for this, Jesus, but how could I not help? How about an ice cream shake, I asked. Mix in some protein powder. I suggested a loaded baked potato, macaroni and cheese, pizza, and yogurt. I'm getting yogurt for my daughter, who's been sick, I told her. Thanks so much, said the other mother, who looked a little less worried, now that she had a plan. I'm going to get the things you suggested. Go home and make my girl a shake. I'll pray for your daughter, and I'll pray for yours, I promise. Oh, Jesus, you knew all along I did have time for this. Put them together for a reason. I like this one. I thought that was a good, she was a good writer. What do you guys think? I like this one a lot better than I did some of the others, actually. Okay, and the homework today is, let's see what Pat's homework is. Today, omit completing two items at the bottom of your to-do list. Use the extra time to extend kindness to someone Jesus places in your path. Because they're not there by accident. You're always put with these people for a reason. Trust me, I'll be thinking about someone. This has happened before. And I missed the opportunity. I didn't, I didn't do it. But I'm like, this person. You know, I really need to talk to this person that I haven't seen since elementary school. You know, I need to tell her something. And God put us together out of nowhere. Because I hadn't seen her in years. God put us together like three times. Right there together. But I never said a word chickened out and didn't say anything. And I regret it to this day. I found her online and we talked then. But I wasn't the same. God does that. He'll put you together. He'll put you with people you need to be with. Strangers, people you know. Some people, you know, they're in your life for a short time. Some people's in your life for the rest of your life. But everybody's there for a reason. 
to teach you a lesson or you, for you to teach them a lesson or somebody in their lives or in your lives maybe. You don't know. But God knows the plan. All right, so our next Bible study will be in the book of Psalms, Psalm 30. So I will go get that set up, of course. But let's go read our animal devotion. Sure thinks it's about a cat. What do you guys think it's about tonight? The last one of January. It is by Liz Kimmel. And Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 is the Bible. Verse... He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. And it is called Faded Memory, Vivid Reminder. Okay, Sherm thinks it's a cat. and You guys think it's... We'll see. I have been a city girl from the day of my birth. I've grown up learning how to navigate met metropolis... Metropolis whatever, freeways, and tangled city streets. My mode of transportation has always been a car, a bus, or a bike. But I do have some vivid memories from my early years of actually riding on a horse. Horse! My mom was raised in southern Minnesota and still had friends who lived on farms. Recently, I found a faded black and white Polaroid photo from my childhood that I'd nearly forgotten. In it, I'm perched on the back of a jet black pony. My eyes are wide, open, and elated, and I'm hanging on to the reins for dear life as the pony breaks into trot. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful I rediscovered this memory. The photo reminded me not only of the joy and amazement my young city girl heart felt back then, but also of something much more important that is every bit as true today. I'm still a city girl, and my experience on horseback are now regulated to cherish childhood recollections. But those memories remind me that every once in a while, in the middle of my everyday routine, God drops an extraordinary occurrence into my life that reaffirms for me how much he delights in bringing me moments of pure joy. A sailboat ride, sledding with the grandkids, watching as my grandson shoots the winning basket in his game, and of course, remembering the lovely pony rides from my childhood. Heavenly Father, you delight in seeing your children experience delight Thank you for all the times in my life that you surprised me with joy beyond my imagination. I know you are laughing right alongside me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know God does. Our Father has a good sense of humor. Where do you think we get it? I know we share a lot of laughs together. I trust and believe that. How could you not laugh at some of the things I say and do? I'm always doing something stupid or funny. <laughs> I'm always doing something dumb, I'm telling you. I trip over my own feet, choke on my own spit. I'm a mess. You can't not laugh. All right, guys, well, that was everything for our Bible study tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, uh, Psalm 30 is our next Bible study, so I will go get it set up. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless you.